Hello everyone, welcome to my new video on how to propagate jasmine from cuttings. Now many of you will have watched my original video and several hundred of you were kind enough to mention in the comments that the music was a bit too loud to hear my voiceover care tips on the narration. And I've got to put my hand up, I shall put it up now, there it is. That was my mistake. It's not always easy to hear when you're editing the video, the levels between the music and the mic. So that was my bad. So this video is the director's cut, if you like. I've addressed the music volume issues. I've made some other little tweaks to the video, which I think you'll enjoy. And so what you should find is a slightly more concise and a certainly easier to listen to video. So if you're one of those people that found it difficult with the music, then hopefully you'll enjoy this new version of that video. Thanks again for watching. Please give it a thumbs up if you find it useful and subscribe for more houseplant related videos coming along very soon. Enjoy. One, two, three, four. Welcome back to another video guys. This is Andy and today I want to talk to you about propagating white jasmine from cuttings. This is a step-by-step -step guide. Firstly, try to take your cuttings in the morning. Firstly, try to take your cuttings in the morning if possible. The stems will be the most full of moisture at this time. Before the sun hits the plant and transpiration starts to dry out the stems and the leaves. Transpiration. Find a fresh healthy looking stem to cut. Cut just below a leaf node. This is where the leaves connect to the stem. For the soil I'm using a small amount of normal houseplant soil a large amount of perlite and some horticultural grit. The reason why is that cuttings don't need any food to grow initially. They can't take on nutrients until their root system is fully developed. So you could just use 100% perlite or even 100% sand. What is important though is good drainage during this initial period because while we need to retain moisture for the cutting, we don't want the growing media too wet because the stem can rot and quickly die. So as usual we want moist soil but not wet. Always use a dibber to make your hole for the cutting. Don't push the stem into the soil because they're very thin stems and you can easily damage it when pushing it in and then it will have no chance of rooting. I quite like to plant the cuttings near the edge of the pot because this is usually the last place to dry out. So it will retain the most consistent moisture for the longest amount of time. So once you have all your cuttings where you want them and you've sealed them up with a clear plastic bag or a jar like this, be sure to keep it out of the direct sun to begin with. If the sun hits the bag or the jar, it will quickly overheat it and dry it out too quickly. So find a nice shady spot or somewhere with some indirect light and an even temperature. Every week you can open the bag or just lift the jar to check on everything and let the old air out and some fresh air in. It will take quite a few months for new roots to develop on your cutting so be patient. And here's one I made earlier. If you can see new growth on the top of the plant, 
that's a good sign that you have new roots because it won't be able to grow without them. You can also check underneath the pot if you see roots starting to appear through the drainage holes then obviously that will tell you too. Alright I think that pretty much wraps this one up for the jasmine propagation from cuttings video. If you have any questions about this process feel free to let me know in the comments down below I'm always happy to answer them if I can. And as always, thank you for watching and I'll catch you very soon on another video. Bye for now.